Welcome. In this video, I would like to talk to or talk about matters in hand. There's a sort of joke in that because the matter, are we talking about something tangible, something material? And also about the, the whole theme surrounding the hand. For example, um, you can see this hand, but you can't really see the hand that is holding this device, but you know it's there. This is going somewhere, and it also brings in the number four. Actually, it's, it was, I had to sort of smile to myself pri just prior to making this video. I thought I'd better free up some memory space on the memory card in to enable to record this without it cutting out. And what you would say is the spiritual downloads just get coming and I'm saying stop, enough. There's so much I can say and yet I want to try and keep it simple um, at the same time. So anyway. What I'd like you to picture in your mind is the symbol of the Earth, which is a circle with a cross in it. As I say on many videos, number four is a door. And if you imagine that circle, now you have those two intersecting lines, the horizontal and the vertical line. Now imagine that they connect to a square hence squaring the circle, but you can't see the square outside of the circle. But you can see the quad system. So you could have something we could label as positive, or something as good, with positive intentions. You can have something that, as it turns out the outcome through the action is good, but it would seem to be negative. That would be somebody, um, suddenly, a total stranger suddenly going up, running up to them and pushing them suddenly. Now you might think, well that's a, a horrible thing to do, but it may be that there's a motor vehicle coming that would have run them over and possibly ended their life so it's actually saved the life so there's a what seems to be negative but it's actually something positive there's also the mirror counterpart there is something that would seem to be positive but is actually negative that would be religious dogmas um, a lot of science and many more things things that on the surface would look good but seem more to have a very negative uh, theme that runs through them shall we say then you have the outright negative negative which is maybe doing something self-serving and doing things regardless of how it affects others that would be an example of a negative negative so there's a there's your quad there's your four um one moment so i've said on videos in the past there is such a thing as a hidden hand that does not seem to like to get its own hand or hands dirty and operates and gets others to do its dirty work, shall we say. But I thought we could go back to the source of this, or look for other examples, and how significant the hands actually are as a theme. And as much as anything else, it will reveal something about your physical being that you may have not even considered. But consider sayings like, are you in touch with reality? 
very much things are to do with not the actual object or the thing itself or the concept itself but the actual action so in the case of are you in touch with the, the reality the action by its definition although it's just so shall we say a me mental concept is in the word touch in other words feeling as i've said before feeling is the true sight and what do you mostly feel with that's your hands. Oh, this has gone out again. So, I, I, I would imagine, certainly from what I can recall, um, pretty much every Wild West film has a, a theme of um, what were called Red Indians, Native American tribesmen, and they would greet with an open hand held up with, and saying the word how. Now that might not seem to have a deeper meaning to it, but the action of that is showing you how. How to conduct yourself, how to approach others, because it is an open hand. It is showing there is nothing concealed. Generally, the perception of native tribesmen would be, be that they are sleeveless. So there is nothing concealed even up the arm or in, in a sleeve, because there is no sleeve, and the hand is open, so there is nothing concealed, whereas if the hand was that way round, it may be possible that there is something concealed behind... Um, as a hidden hand, although the hand can be seen, one side of it is hidden. I think also, if we look at, at, with a perception of the material world, because let's talk about the matter in hand, how often do you see maybe two heads of state? They always do the uh, press photography handshake, and of course, from the perspective of the photograph of the, or the film, one of those two heads of state will only be showing the back of the hand in the action of the handshake. What actually is going on with a handshake? It's bringing together two hands. Now I would go so far to say that when we talk about such things as initiation in uh, the occult world, things like secret societies, that it, the initiation may not actually be so much something sinister in itself. It's more if you were to bring in something like a drumbeat, uh, an incense, ways to stimulate certain parts of the brain to open you up to new ways of feeling. So when that through practice is mastered, that you can then transmit possibly at an energetic level something between the meeting of the two hands of the heads of state, maybe passing some sort of message. There's also the idea with a handshake that certain little uh, pressure points between the two would give a coded message or a sign of recognition of being in the same group, shall we say. I want to uh, look at sort of a, a, the source of all of this. And it's in the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew. It's chapter 6. Now the numbers, I feel, come into this. So 6 is referencing the mind's eye. So if we go from chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 4 of the Gospel of Matthew, so 6, 1 makes a 7, 6, 2 makes 8, and then 6, 3 makes 9, and 6, 4 will make one and zero so it reduces to one so there's a numeric reference being shown there but just to read the actual four verses of this chapter six uh, 
this is the King James Version. Take heed that ye do not your aims, your, sorry, your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So it's it's warning. Take heed that you do not your you do not your arms before men. It it sort of then explains this more in verse two. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as like as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. That's the accolades they will get from amongst the men. It's in the material world. That's all, all you're going to get. And if you consider, if I was to say a name like Plato, what do you really know about Plato just from the name? It just, the further back it goes in history, the names just become a label. So the material physical realm recognition is very finite and somehow doesn't become quite so appealing in that sense. So carrying on verse 3 of chapter 6 But when thou doest alms, not let thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That seems a very strange statement. What does it mean, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing? Where can we look for an answer to this? Well, I feel many of you have a perception of what we would define as the control system of this reality. There is coming an end of their time and they don't want to relinquish power. That's in the material external world. But if we internalize that, what it is actually saying, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing, is basically saying you're giving over power from the conscious lower mind that wants to go off and do something, possibly something with good intentions, but purely to get the, the likes, the subscribers, the accolades, the praise, to feel good about themselves. In some ways, there's nothing actually wrong with that, really. But it's not with the, the true intention. What, what you're actually doing, you're handing over the control from the conscious lower mind to the heart mind. The heart knows best. Can I give other, an example of this? Let me just read verse 4 just to finish this first. That thine aims may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Now it's almost going to sound like a little bit hypocr hypocritical to, for me to explain this, but it's something I've already said on video. And I'm saying it purely to use as an example an everyday example, things you you can put yourself into, because that is key to this. You're jumping into another body, effectively. So the example I used, I'm standing in a supermarket in a queue. The next uh, line to the checkout, I observed a lady with a full trolley with maybe a week's worth of uh, groceries, but let's say uh, rather a lot of items it's going to take a while to scan everything and then pay for it behind her was a gentleman with just two items now in my mind i played out a scene of the lady saying to the gentleman or oh, would you like to go in front of me if you've only got two items and i've been on the receiving end of that and it, it, it is lovely when that is is done somebody shows consideration but the beauty of doing that, it wasn't really from the conscious mind at all. I certainly didn't do it to say, look look what I can do. They never knew that I, I did this. It was, shall we say, done in secret. I never said I manifested this to them or to anybody. But I'm having to use it, obviously, as an example in the video. But it's something we can all do. And it when you do it enough, 
it is no diff it's not you have some special gift it's an ability that you all have if you can apply it it is something you have done with learning to walk it is practice 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 it is repetition until it becomes second nature so I can put myself in the position of the other person I don't know who they are I'm making no judgment on them they may be a, a horrible person they may be really grumpy have a very negative outlook on life but I've not made a judgment on that person I've seen the situation I've created a picture in the mind and it played out instantly the lady said to the, the gentleman would you like to go in front of me so it creates a more positive vibration I wasn't doing it for any other reason than just uh, a wish to put out a positive energy and overwrite a scene that's being played out before me. I was rewarded in, in how instantaneous that was played out because it says you will be rewarded in secret. So I felt that inside myself. It's like, wow. We have this enormous power to, to do things like that. That is, that sort of situation you can do very easily and it does become second nature. I can approach a road junction, I can see its situation. I can, in an instant, I can play out an outcome where everything keeps flowing or it diffuses road rage or anything like that without a thought, a conscious thought about it and as much... I'm not going to get any gratification or um, from anybody at that scene because they would be totally unaware that I've created something in my mind that has then instantly played out. This is an interactive realm. It's, this is totally possible to do. So just to give another uh, biblical quote here. One moment, I've got to try and open the book here. If we come to... It's the Gospel of Mark, this time. If we can find it. So it's after Matthew. I've lost the bookmark I had. Um, oh, it slipped inside. So it's the Gospel of Mark. It's chapter 1 and it's verse 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel, which I would say is actually saying the God spell. Which is when you've handed over control from the conscious lower mind to the heart. I mean, we can all uh, create and envision things that, oh, if I say this, it's going to look good, or... People do it in displays of clothing, how they want to project themselves to the outside world. I'm as much guilty of it. I mean, I, I've basically taken the general consensus of every ancient Greek philosopher, I suppose, and every Greek god and many more. King Arthur, you name it. They've all got the long hair and the beard. It's a it is displaying something, yes, but it wasn't a, a conscious decision to do that. Anyway, we've got off on a tangent there, so bring the, let's bring things back, back to hand. Now also with the open hand, you also get to see the lines which tell the story. The body will tell on the mind. If you observe your own palms, you will see a story unfold. The left hand, that's the past. That is left behind. That tells you of the past. The right hand is the path you take. That is reflected internally when you hand over the controls from the lower conscious, self-serving, animus side, which is very much in the physical being, and you hand over the controls to what are basically the non-physical three parts of your um, uh, that are incorporated into your physical being, as it were. Although 
it doesn't equate in terms of material dimensions, of course, because you're like an inverse Russian doll. The universe is you inverse. It's far greater on the inside. That is where the kingdom of heaven is. It's, again, referencing the hands, it's about getting in touch with your inner self, your true being. So again, it's referencing the action of touch, of feeling, which is implied by the very thing in the physical we use most for actions and things, in acting things, is the use of hands, whether it be like I'm doing now, although you can't really see them, hand gestures as to sort of emphasize as I'm explaining something. It implies flow, it implies movement. That is the whole point of it. It's not visually static. The hands are as much as anything else to communicate with to dis through display, through gesture. Um, yeah, so at this point, before I go off on an, another tangent, it, this is very, the very ha hard thing to do with any video topic is to stay on the topic because there is nothing that is not connected into it all. Um, that is to give a recommendation to a channel called Silas Speaks. I'm quite amazed at how few subscriber subscribers there are on that channel. It, it's like, where has this channel been? And I've put in a, a community post um, a very good video called God of Te Gods of Te Technocracy, I think, it, if I remember the title correctly. I will endeavour to put a link in the description under this video for this. I feel it's something worth listening to. Silas Speaks, I don't know the gentleman's name, very well put together presentations, makes an, uh, a, lo a lot of sense, quotes sources, and simplifies Rudolf Steiner's uh, explanation of things. So, as is explained on that video, the false light creates a shadow. This is what Rudolf Steiner calls the Luciferic and the Aramanic principles. Two polarities that would seem to be opposing hands, but are actually working together, creating that handshake the two hands are, will come together, the luciferic. If people lean too far and are lured too far by that, for example, through religions, it will actually then hand over to the Aramanic. So it's playing out what is shown in the Bible, but doing the opposite polarity. This is why it says about don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Well, you can see that reflected out in its opposite of the left hand and the right hand are very much working in a, in a coordinated fashion from some kind of body or being that sits in the middle. There's a meme that often goes around things like Facebook about politics. There is a right wing and there is a left wing and there is a often displayed as such as a symbol of an eagle which looks and from its perspective it is above everything else but it comes down and it gets its claws in and it steals it snatches and takes away it's very much the hidden hand it operates in the same way so it would make sense to use the eagle to symbolize that you've only got to think of certain empires and organizations that have used the eagle as a symbol. Is there anything more I wish, wish to say? Yes, there is. I feel I want to end on a po more positive note. We've talked about some about the negative things about it, but I invite you to sort of paraphrase Neville Goddard, try this for yourself. 
it requires you put yourself in the shoes of another in a, in, a situ, in a situation, like in a supermarket, and you instantly play out the drama in your mind with the outcome you wish to create on behalf of the other, with no um, conscious thought of, I'm going to look good for doing this, or there it that nobody will know what you've what you've done. Only you will know. But this is what it's really all about. You're you're showing yourself who you are. You're discovering what you what you are truly capable of doing by putting your mind to something. Think also how hands are often used to describe what is what is on the, the measurement of time as in a watch or a clock you have the minute hand and you have the hour hand well i would suggest and notice that it's the kingdom of heaven is close at hand as in singular so it's also mirroring and reiterating about let thine eye be, be singular so could the I not so much be up here as such, but more in the centre of the right palm, if you take the right hand path? If I put this into a sort of physical material con context, um, if, you find it so, if you were to find yourself in a room and the, the light bulb suddenly goes pop, and the, you're suddenly in darkness, well, more than likely than not, you will start to put your hand out and you will try and feel your way to the door to let the light in so you can see. But you've got to feel your way in the darkness. It's the action through the hands. I don't know if how many of you even consider about, think about all those swirling lines that make up the fingertips, the things used for fingerprints and identification. But consider the actual shape, the swirling. Is it not sort of reminiscent of like a flow, um, constant motion, which is reflected in nature with water, motion, emotion. It, so you could say it's energy motion that is taking place. So I invite you to, to play out this creating a scene in your mind whilst observing a scene and influencing a far more beneficial outcome that, than what possibly could have played out. Now some of you may say, oh, oh that's just coincidence. Well, that's your opinion. I'm not offended by that opinion. I'm just giving you the testimony of my own experience and citing things, noticing the the patterns to things and themes of things like hands and symbolically what, what they represent. Uh, what has also just popped into my mind is the flag of Northern Ireland has the red hand on it. Um, it's another story connected with a hand which has a symbolic meaning that goes beyond whatever the the history is, I, I can't even remember, and I, devil's in the detail, I don't, I don't feel I really need to go in, into the detail, it's just taking out of these stories, recognising the patterns, and also seeing the unfolding, the magic is in the action, in, in the constant flux of things. It's not in the static, it's not in the physical material as such, but it is and can be played out in the physical. So I, I really do invite you, shall we say, hand on heart as well, invite you to try this and keep doing this with it like with the scenario I've described, and you'll you'll come across other scenarios where you'll be able to do do this. And the more, of course, the more you do it, the more you practice, the more you repeat. 
like I say, it's not a special gift if you've gone through the experience of learning to drive. I'm sure you can remember that first few driving lessons where you are consciously having to instruct the body to put your foot on the clutch, put it into gear and put your foot on the brake and so on and so on. And But you do it enough, you reach a level of competency that you can then show to the world that you are capable of doing it. Okay, it's there's a very grey area, I would say, with um, standards of driving, um, with varying contributing factors, the lust for speed, the appeal to the ego. But we're going off on a tangent again. Um, but suffice to say that through the practice, it becomes second nature. So when you are then faced with an experience of maybe a dog runs out in front of your vehicle, you can safely bring that vehicle to, to stationary with no injury to the dog and no damage to your vehicle. So it's applying that same principle as much as anything else and with the same intentions of an outcome that is not going to be something which would seem to be far more negative, to produce an outcome that is far more beneficial to all involved. And through doing this action, it's increasing a frequency, it's increasing a vibration that will certainly have a, a radiating out effect which will go a long way to the expression of um, bringing heaven upon earth as much as it is as about pulling earth upwards as it were as uh, uh, shall we say like an ascending if we want to consider it in a physical sense so yes i think that's pretty much covered the topic um, about matter in hand and of course the matter in hand is something that is always in the present it's in the moment it is something you can manifest on behalf of another um, you can do things in a very benevolent way this way so hopefully that has explained that biblical verse hopefully it has given you uh, example sufficient examples without I've certainly not exhausted references to hands and sight and touch and feel. There's far more to this, but it's just a broad overview that I hope will make sense and I hope it's something you can adopt as a daily practice. So it begins to make a huge, significant difference because don't doubt your own abilities and your own true power inside. How are you going to really know unless you try it for yourself? Unless you go through the experience. But the beauty of the experience is it is an experience definitely worth repeating. And it is a far more enriching and fulfilling feeling that comes out of it. To the point where the the, the joy and the wonder is that you've done it in secret. Because is it not, when we look at the perceived negative reality of this realm of identification, looking for key individuals, what is that really about? Is it looking for key individuals that have imagination and creativity that this side that would seem to have no imagination or creativity, only the ability to mimic, is looking for that missing magic ingredient. But there's a beautiful balance in this that you won't discover this for yourself. Whilst you have any lower conscious expectations of the results, shall we say. Right, that's uh, ended up as quite a long video. Um, today, that sort of seasonal cold has 
shifted. I don't think I could have made this video yesterday. Uh, as much as anything else, not just the, from the spiritual download perspective, but from the perspective of the body was saying rest. And it's very important to listen to the, what the body is saying. You're not being lazy. You are respecting the vehicle that is carrying you about and allowing it to go through its natural process, which you don't have to even consciously take part in, apart from the acknowledgement that you have a physical vessel and pretty much the entire time that physical vessel, vessel would seemingly be running on an autopilot where you don't have to consciously put any, any thought into operation of any of the organs or any of the functions of the body apart from shall we say the physical action side of things so the physical action is just being in the right place at the right time and observing and then overwriting the what is on the background screen anything external of you and then overwriting the program with a more beneficial outcome from what you observe in the moment. Oh, <laughs> that's um, probably quite deep, but uh, I hope it makes sense and I hope it gives you something to work with. It's so easy to point to things and point to faults and the negatives and this is wrong and that is wrong. Is it not the solutions, the soul lotions that we're looking for when we can bathe ourselves in that true light? That is the real lotion. That's the only lotions you should really be putting on yourself as well. But that's another story. Um, shout out to Static in the Attic, who's very recently, I think it's maybe his last video, talking about uh, diets and things like that. It's worth checking out. I'll put a link in the description to that one as well. So until next time, um, oh, just one final thing. Check in the description if you need help in any way. Um, if you're struggling, uh, finding things too, uh, too overwhelming with the external world, there is a way through and Please do come and talk to me. And there's the three card tarot card readings and uh, the befriending service if you're really struggling, finding things difficult. So, yeah, that that's about covers everything for this video. So, as always, unconditional love to you all.